Greetings, greetings. I am sharing with you guys uh, an email that I received this morning from the Center for Inquiry. And I am going to read it to you as well as my response. And then we are going to uh, go check out their website. And I'm going to offer some more speculation there. So, um, again, it's addressed to me. And we at the Center for Inquiry, CFI, have been protecting people from charlatans, con artists, fake psychics, sorry for the redundancy, conspiracy theorists, religious cultists, faith healers, and quacks since our inception. We call out and put to test anyone who wants to separate gullible people from their hard-earned money by making extraordinary claims, a test they inevitably fail. Then we broadcast that failure as widely as possible so consumers know to beware. Then they have a link, as you can see, protect people now. And before they even tell the story, they're having you the option to click on a link. Again, another red flag. Um, but then it's followed by this story. Here's a story from my own personal life. Well, from my own life, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I had periodontal surgery recently, and as part of the me medical recovery package, my periodontist provided me a box from Stella Life that said Intelligent Healing as its tagline. The box contained several products and called itself a Vega Oral Care Recovery Kit. This kit included an antimicrobial rinse to promote oral health and a spray in jail for pain and swelling relief. When I got home and examined the Stella Life package more closely, it said on the front, homeopathic. I had been handed nothing more than a box of placebos. I then noticed that every single claim of efficiency or efficacy on the box, and there were a lot of claims, had an asterisk. When you finally found where the asterisk was defined, it said claims based on traditional homeopathic practice, not accepted medical evidence not FDA evaluated. Wow, think of all the pain and discomfort that could have been alleviated with real medicine. Instead, consumers of this product suffered because they were handed fakery. It's truly unconscion unconscion uh, <laughs> unconscionable, unconscionable. Once I informed my periodontist, he quickly ended ties with Stella Life a company that markets its products through dental offices across the country. Our legal department has since been contacting the dentists and periodontists listed on Stella Life's promotional materials and warning them that they are endorsing products that contain no medicine. We got the company's attention. In April, we received a cease and desist letter from a major law firm representing Stella Life. The law firm claims we are defaming the company. Our response in one word, nuts. Pro-science, anti-pseudoscience. That's CFI, and boy, is it a stance worth fighting for. You have another button to click for offering financial support. Uh, and then another closing paragraph. No other organization stands at the intersection of skepticism and secularism promoting reason, critical thinking, and the scientific method as the best way to solve problems, as well as promoting church-state separation to keep dogma out of our lives. We are unique, and we are here thriving and strong because of you and your support. I hope you will consider continuing to support with the gift today. With warm regards, Robin Bloomner, President and CEO. The Center for Inquiry, I am registered because I live near one in Indianapolis, Indiana, but they apparently are headquartered out of Amherst, New York. Uh, my response, well, my decision to respond was triggered for a few reasons. First, the opening paragraph of, um, 
attracting attention based off of labels and um, things that have a negative connotation. That was my first flag. Uh, and then we go on to talk about <clears throat> an experience that was shared and then a company that was put into the spotlight based off of not the use of the product, but the opinion of a person who received the product without even using it. So I decided to respond via email and um, my response is as follows. I start with quoting the mission statement that I found on their website. The mission of the Center for Inquiry is to foster a secular society based on reason, science, freedom of inquiry, and humanist values. That is their mission. And before we even go into the rest of my letter in response to their email, I want to note that this is, again, secular society that they are attempting to shape. So my perspective um, may be one that's outside of their reach, and it may just show that I need to unsubscribe from receiving these emails. <clears throat> but I go on to say, I opened an email today, excited to read what mind-shifting, eye-opening perspective I'd get from the center of inquiry, only to be so disappointed in what I perceive as irresponsible reporting that it screamed for my assistance in helping the Senate to maintain the pro-science, anti-pseudoscience platform that it claims to stand on. Before we get to my primary concern, I'd like to first express that I have been witness to those who grapple for credibility to begin arguments through shallow degradations, influencing and perspective shifting to color the black and white picture that is to be painted. Social manipulations like name calling, a form of shaming is the lowest frequency of energy or emotion you can use to harness attention. If you need examples of what this type of rallying does, I'll have you to recall the numerous polarizing battles in this country under civil rights. You're open to your reader. We at the Center for Inquiry have been protecting people from charlatans, con artists, fake psychics, conspiracy theorists, religious cultists, faith healers, and quacks since our inception. Uh, the use of these labels are tasteless, religiously tactical, and fear-based marketing at the very least. There's no science to or statistical results to be had of your protection work. This reveals your organization as a private interest, ideological watchdog and influencer. We focus, we're focusing on my main concern, the personal narrative that you shared is more pro-status quo than pro-science. Your article skews the perspective of homeopathy and is more regressive than progressive. The point of inquiry is to facilitate progress after all. Homeopathy is a medical system based on the belief that the body can cure itself. Those who practice it use tiny amounts of natural substances like plants and minerals, and they believe that these stimulate the healing process. I obtained this definition from webmd.com slash balance slash what is homeopathy. Sticking to science, many pharmaceuticals contain active ingredients that are derived from nature, from plants. I personally speak from the perspective of what would be considered a quack herbalist who would reach for willow bark as a tea instead of aspirin for a headache. The faith healers may just know that God created herbs and the natural world for healing and remember that aspirin derives from the modest tree bark. Moreover, with your write-up focusing on your dentist aftercare, 
you might find it interesting that the dental pain relief medication, Eugenol, available in CVS or other pharmacies, is nothing more than clove oil that can be purchased from the grocery. How's that for a con? This level of advocacy that claims to be science-based promotes synthetic ways of being which borders on an atheist reality. The labeled pseudoscience of homeopathy may just be best experienced through those who take healing more personally, but it is not to be disregarded as time and many of great minds have attested clearly. I have a link that takes us to a list of people who have promoted their experiences using um, the sciences promoted under homeopathy. I will link that at the end of this video. I go on to say, I'd also like to acknowledge the fact that your judgments and opinions don't constitute fact. You base your entire gossipy write-up off of an opinion you formed after reading a box, not after having tried any of the items. Again, very irresponsible journalism, in my opinion. Use more to skew a certain perspective than provide any real insight or relevant information. Your opinions, like I've been handed nothing more than a box of placebos, is based around a biased and skewed sense of what is real. You make reference to real medicine, and I've offered alternate perspectives above. There are many people who consider plant-derived essential oils as real medicine. I'd also like to clarify the not FDA evaluated statement. Please do realize that neither are your multivitamins or other wellness supplements. A dental care after kit is a supplement to your periodontal visit. It's not intended as medicine. I think you are in fact the fame in the company and they should hold you legally responsible. Um, the reporters and organizations that create the damaging opinion pieces around their brand. Who is to police the police? Best, invisible subscriber. What do you think about this um, email that I received? Are you in agree agreement with the way that I responded? Um, I chose to respond simply because I work in a realm where these labels are dangerous. I deal in using food as medicine and promoting herbs as healing modalities, which is um, quite a different way to look at healing in a traditional system where you have uh, the pharmaceutical industry dominating. So this uh, triggered me to respond just to protect, again, an industry that um, not only am I in, but I believe in and I um, wholeheartedly subscribe to. It's a way of life. It's a connection with the earth that is, again, being put at risk when we blindly click support to things like this under the guise of protect people now, using again, these terms that we um, in a country that's heavily Christian associate with the darkness and, and demons and again, just all things negative. So I wanted to point out the misinformation coming from organizations uh, like the Center for inquiry, and let's just go check out more about what they are promoting and talking about here. So I have their website pulled up. Um, for them to promote the email that they sent, they seem to have a religious perspective, a nightmare year for endangered atheists. Again, I use that word without saying this uh, in their piece. So it's interesting they're promoting this man-made way of living when they seem to have a religious 
perspective. Um, and what we see here is just more um, things that co correlate to uh, other spiritual experiences that are happening right now collectively. We see uh, also Q and crypto, um, O2 and UFOs, just again, they seem to not have much humanitarian insight. This seems like a gossip column. I see a lot of commentary on the political things that are happening. But again, I want to refocus on what this mission said. And I guess it does very much so scream secular society. So, you know, I am putting my energy towards something that I don't need to. I just wanted to share my response to the misinformation that I received in my email. Again, targeted information under the label of don't be duped. Um, I hope anyone who knows me in this experience can uh, see through it with me. Um, but that is all I wanted to share with you guys today. If you are as strongly moved by the way that they have labeled natural healers, herbalists, um, birth workers, again, faith healers, quacks, those people who fall outside of um, what's considered normal, traditional care and practice, anyone who practices alternative medicines, uh, essential oils, um, breathing techniques, any of those things, you should be called to alert because of um, insights like this letter that I received and you should be responding to these local institutions that that propagate these ways of thinking that essentially go against your very uh, way of living and being. So until next time, peace and love.